Scared the life out of me. Nearly scared the life out of you. Look what you've done to poor little Tilly. Steady on. Didn't mean frighten anyone. So what's it to me, Mrs. S? Ooh, I don't know. What specials have you got on today, Joe? Got some nice sausages. Some nice steak and kidney. Just cut it up. Nice and fresh. No, I don't think I've got the stomach for that at the moment. What with Tilly's heart and all. And, well, to tell you the truth, I don't know how you can slice all this up. What with waiting for a donor yourself. Well, you know, it's all just meat to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe, how much longer? How much longer do we have to wait? Tilly's not been too good of late and, well, you're not looking so crash hot yourself. Oh, I know, love. But you gotta keep the faith. Everything's gonna be just fine. You never know what's round the corner. Edward Dibble, I presume? Wow, that's so cool how you do that. How did you know it was me? I'd have to be blind as well as deaf not to know you were coming. <laughs> what do you got there? A friggin' rose garden. There you go again! Mate, you're amazing. Yeah, bloody amazing. A blind bastard who can smell and hear a dickhead from a mile away. Where? You, you bloody idiot. Oh, right. So who are the flowers for anyway? Well, I can't tell you too much, but... She's the most beautiful girl in town. Oh, well, whatever. I'm sure Uncle Joe would love to know that he's paying you for these little shopping expeditions. Jeez, that was close. What do you mean close? I knew it was coming. Get off me, you idiot. Sorry, Stephen, I was just trying to help. I don't need your help, Dibble. Sorry, mate. I'll get that for you. Stephen, my boy, glad to see you. Sorry about that, Stephen. Hello, Matilda. How are you? Fine, thanks, Stephen. Yourself? Fabulous. Oh, fancy Tilly. Stephen even recognised your voice. Oh, don't they make a handsome couple, Joe? Oh, for sure, love. Once we get this eye business out of the way, there'll be no stopping the two of you. Can't wait to have you back by my side, son. You reckon you can lock up tonight? Yeah, no worries, Joe. And don't forget to put everything away.
came in, love. Can I stay a bit longer? Doesn't look like he's coming, love. Anyway, it's a bit late for you to be out now. You need your rest. Back for me wallet. I wouldn't have found him till tomorrow, otherwise, I should never have left him on his own. It's all my fault. I warned him about the door, but the silly bugger, he never did listen. I shouldn't have left him, I should have thought. Don't be so hard on yourself, mate. Accidents happen. Yep, got a sip on here, boys. Nice and fresh. Yeah, license says it's a donor. See you soon. With heavy hearts and deep gratitude, we farewell what remains of Edward Dibble. We give thanks for this simple lad that can be measured by the generous gift of life he has given so many. Young Stephen now has eyes to see, Joe a set of kidneys, <laughs> and dearest Matilda the gift of Edward's heart. May our Father grant that his soul be kept in everlasting peace. such a bad kid. Oh, what's that got to do with anything? He was useless, Joe. Useless. His life for yours and Tilly's. Not to mention Stephen's eyes. Had to be done, love. It was the only way. some place where we're not going to be disturbed. Yeah, love. I know just the place. <laughs> we'll end up like poor old Ed.
If you want to be a champ in this game, all you have to do is train hard, fight smart, and don't let anyone get a hook in you. It happens all the time, with a bad card, a wrong tip, or getting involved in a dodge deal. My trainer Terry can tell you all about it. Like everyone in this business, he has a penchant for gambling. He counts on a fair fight like he counts on a fair deal. This is Bert. A failed boxer and an even worse trainer. And now he's fixing fights. Tony, he's Bert's latest brawler. If he was any good, Bert wouldn't need to fix fights. Freddy the Forehead, they call him that because of his negotiation skills. Freddy's got a hook in Bert from his rig fight that didn't follow the script. Bert has to clear this debt. The chain is formed. Freddy has a hook in Bert, and Bert has a hook in Terry. Better be right this time. And now Terry's linked to Freddy. This is where I come in. I told Terry I'd sort it out. Terry needs me to take a dive to clear his debt with Bert and free him from this chain of fools. Everyone is under the same strain. It doesn't matter where you lie within it, because each link is just as likely to break as the next. This chain is going to break. Once someone gets their hooks in you, you become their puppet, under their control and at their mercy. Until the debt is repaid. In order to become a champ, you just have to not let anyone get their hooks into you. But no one has their hooks in me. Shut up and listen, Freddy. You screwed me over last time. Your one chance is gone. If you mess this up, the cold chill on the back of your neck's gonna be a 44. Do you understand me? Yeah, I understand. Good. Is the fight fixed? It's sorted. He's going down. What's now become clear to me is that Bert and Terry didn't know. The chain was longer than they thought. It involved people they couldn't see. Once the chain has been broken, the two parts are separated and will never meet. Whoever got Freddy, removed the hook from Bert. Bert's good luck has become Terry's good fortune. The chain is broken, Terry's off the hook. I told him I'd sort it out. <laughs>